Hi everyone, I just found out that the FDA is seeking public comment about Wolbach infected mosquito releases. So um, there will be a transcript at the end here of what I'm going to be uh, sending off to them. And uh, here's the key points, okay. Wolbachia can never be taken back and when millions of these Wolbachia infected 80s mosquitoes are released, when they die or are consumed, Wolbachia can live for a whole week in a dead host. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Okay. So Wolbachia carried by Drosophilia melanogaster, I'm reading it because I can't say it quite right, also known as WMEL, it's one of the types used in these releases. Uh, causes widespread degeneration of tissues including the brain, retina, muscles, and culminates in early death. And the argument that this only happens in flies and not humans does not hold water. Just like us, flies have to breathe, digest, move, learn, and coordinate in order to survive. Many of our organs are in fact regulated by the same genes. The functions of these genes and gene networks that regulate flies turns out to be astonishingly similar to processes in mammalian and human development. In fact, work on the nervous system of Drosophila has made seminal contributions to modern neurobiology, Bellin et al. 2010, and there are many examples in study literature. Wolbachia plays a key role in the inflammatory pathology of many diseases. It contributes to the adverse effects of heartworm infection, river blindness, lymphatic filariasis, sorry, to name just a few. And yes, under experimental conditions, some Wolbachia species can in fact infect mammalian cells, even human cells in vitro. Jack Warren, a leading authority on Wolbachia, noted that this parasite has implanted itself inside the cells of 70% of the world's invertebrates, co-evolving with them. And now we found at least one species where the parasite's entire or nearly entire genome has been absorbed and integrated into the hosts. That's huge. Some of the Wolbachia genes actually seem to be fused to the genes of the fruit fly. Drosophila NSA. I'm not sure I'm saying that's right. The study, Wolbachia, normally a symbiont of Drosophila, can be virulent, causing degeneration and early death, by Min and Benzart, 1997, noted. When screening for gene mutations that cause brain degeneration, they found that D-MEL, X chromosome deficiency strain, had notably reduced lifespan compared with normal flies. And to de determine whether the chromosomal deficiency was responsible for the phenotype, they removed the deficiency by crossing it with the white mutant W1118, which is another type of fly. And it had a it, it's a fly that has a normal lifespan. Now, to the researcher's surprise, even when the deficiency had been removed by genetic recombination, the short-life phenotype persisted and was maternally transmitted to both male and female offspring. Which sounds an awful lot like Zika. And I do think Zika may be acting like a bacterial phage working in tandem with Wolbachia. Now, to find the, early, the cause of early death, these researchers examined the adult fly eye and brain at various ages. As the age progressed, gross distortions of the brain and retina developed. A profusion of Wolbachia and infected flies were spread widely within the brain and retina, as well as the oocytes, and that would be the, the egg cells in the female. Lastly, the study, Detection of Wolbachia Genes in a Patient with Non-Hodgkin's Lymphoma by Min et al. 
by Chen Dong et al. 2015 clearly states, Wolbachia species should be further evaluated, and there are many um, types of Wolbachia, but they should be further evaluated as causes of human infection, especially as Wolbachia infection of mosquitoes is increasingly considered to be a tool for interfering with mosquito-borne transmission of human pathogens. Well, we know this has already happened. Notably, the filarodial coxal gene was not even found in this study patient. And that points to a direct infection of Wolbachia from a mosquito to a human. It is for these reasons that the FDA should conduct independent studies on the safety of Wolbachia in vertebrates, especially humans, since Wolbachia cannot be taken back. Scott O'Neill, who heads many of the Wolbachia infected mosquito releases around the world, said, in two of our initial study sites in Australia, approximately 90% of the mosquitoes continue to be infected with Wolbachia after initial release more than six years ago. It would take decades to restore those ecological balances in, in, in many of these regions. And I believe by now trillions of these Wolbachia infected mosquitoes have been introduced unnaturally into the food chain. Many species feed preferentially on the Aedes genus. Some Kulix larvae actually prey upon the Aedes larvae. Before it's too late, independent researchers need to investigate Wolbachia for ver vertebrate and human safety, and the FDA needs to be involved. Thank you.